Hello, and welcome to our presentation, Creating Physically Based Materials in Minecraft with RTX. My name is Kelsey. I'm Associate Producer on Minecraft with RTX here at NVIDIA. Myself, Paula, one of our brilliant engineers here at NVIDIA, and Joel, Skill Lead Artist at Minecraft, will be showing you all the magic and might of the Minecraft RT engine. By the end of this talk, you'll be geared up to create your own physically based materials for Minecraft with RTX. Key topics of this presentation include photographs from our creator program that have utilized the PBR workflow, a more in-depth discussion on what physically based materials are and how they're used in the Minecraft with RTX engine, and lastly, a demo utilizing both Photoshop and Substance Painter to create both higher resolution 1024 by 1024 and lower resolution 16 by 16 custom textures in the PBR format. In Minecraft with RTX, having the physically based render pipeline gives you, the player, the artist, the creator, a new way to express yourself with the metalness, emissiveness, roughness, normal, and base color functionalities in the PBR pipeline. This means you can now create blocks of various emissive colors with the various intensities, create normal maps for any block, even if that block wasn't intended to have normal or height maps applied in the vanilla textures we've come to know and love, and roughness and metalness maps to further provide depth to that given material. You want a pure mirror block? Sure! I will now be presenting a few photos taken of worlds put together from Minecraft with RTX from some of our beloved Minecraft community creators. Lights, Color, and Shadows, RTX Showcase by creator Perlescent Moon. In this particular slide, I'd like to focus on the seemingly never-ending room displayed. Given the visual cues, you may be able to point out where the room starts and ends. Never before were mirrors possible in Minecraft, and now we can check ourselves out from any angle. With the Minecraft RT engine, we're able to provide the ability for these pure mirror blocks through the use of the PBR pipeline. Depending on how you, the creator, would like to map these textures, you could create a pure mirror block as shown in this photo and map it to any of the available blocks in Minecraft. In this case, we've mapped this pure mirror block to the nether brick. To create a pure mirror block, we'll need to utilize both the metalness and roughness maps. The mirror block has full white for metalness, value 1.0, and full black for roughness, value 0.0. .0. The normal map should be completely flat if one is provided, but we can just do without as the normal map isn't needed. Base colors should be full white, also to note, due to the lack of texture, this file size is fairly small. To be exact, it's 16 by 16. In contrast, you can create a non-pure metallic surface by alternating your use of metalness and roughness. For example, take a look at the stainless steel custom block shown here to the right. The Minecraft RT engine will be able to read more than just flat values and pull from a provided metalness or roughness texture to achieve the results as seen here. Also to note, the size of the stainless steel custom block is 1024 by 1024, or also referred to as a 1K texture. Here are examples of non-HD textures utilizing details provided in the texture maps. The iron block, which is a derivative of the standard vanilla texture. Metalness and roughness both tuned for proper rendering. This map is 16 by 16 pixels. Notice that we're still able to see that crisp edge highlight in normal detail regardless of the size of the map. Same thing goes for the gold block to the right, also a derivative of the standard vanilla texture. Again, metalness and roughness both tuned for proper rendering. This map is also 16 by 16 pixels. Moving on to another world of Temples and Totems, RTX, by creator Razzleberries. In this slide, I'd like to focus on the custom normal maps found on the ground. Take note of the normal detail specifically tailored to work with the custom base color map. In Minecraft with RTX, we're able to apply normal maps to virtually any block found in Minecraft. 
You could even change the intended material completely to fit the needs of your artistic direction. Smooth stone doesn't necessarily need to be smooth. If you wanted more micro-normal detail, you can totally do that with a 512 by 512 or 1024 by 1024 texture set. You could even go lower if you wanted. In this case, the creator utilized 16 by 16 texture maps for their details on the grass. To further dive into normal details, these two images are of custom textures we created as part of an HD texture pack. Both are 1024 by 1024, which gives us plenty of resolution to provide intricate detail in each pebble of the dirt and each indent of the wood plank. Here's a comparison between HD and vanilla derivative oak planks with PBR capabilities. The planks to the left are a 10 1024 by 1024 resolution oak plank we've created and mapped to the oak planks block. The planks to the right are the vanilla derivative, 16 by 16 resolution textures with the added PBR textures. These are essentially the same block, but each has their own artistic direction. On to our third example, Aquatic Adventure RTX by creator Dr. Bond. One of the first things that at least catch my eye are the various emissive blocks throughout this photo. From the pooling red emissive blocks to the bottom right, up to the white emissive blocks that almost look like stardust. These are blocks with custom emissive maps. To the left, we see our standard hardened block, which is now considered our basic colored terracotta block. To the right is the same block, but with an emissive material applied. In this world, the artist mapped all the terracotta, hardened clay, blocks to have emissive properties based off of their color. So the red terracotta blocks emit a red light, the white terracotta blocks emit a white light, and so on. One thing to note is, unlike what you see in these photos, you're not limited to making an entire block emissive or in one color, just like we see here. You, as the creator, can choose if you'd like to have parts of a block emissive, and if you want to make certain pixels a certain color versus other pixels another color. This feature is called Per Pixel Emissivity. The left picture showcases our lovely disco block. It's 1024 by 1024 resolution and has various sections of the block different colors. The right picture is the same texture as the left, but it's at a lower resolution this one being at 16 by 16. Creators can use per pixel glow by using emissive maps and the functionality works for both texturing styles and everything in between. I will now hand this over to Paula for the next part of this presentation. Hello everybody, my name is Paula Jukarainen. I work as a developer technology engineer in NVIDIA and for the past six months or so I've been working with Minecraft with RTX and today I'm here to explain the very basics of physically based rendering and ray tracing. So I hope that after listening my part you will understand what do we mean by physically based rendering and how you can achieve it and what are physically based materials and how you can make them. What do we mean by ray tracing and how that is related to physically based rendering and how Minecraft with RTX use ray tracing and physically based materials. Let's start with a motivational image. So this is a screenshot from Minecraft without any ray tracing. So pretty basic room with red and white and green wall. There's some golden blocks in the middle, a glow block on top and a few glass blocks. And here's the ray traced version of it. And now you can see that the whole feeling and lighting is more realistic. You can see very nice soft shadows on the floor, uh, green and red tint on the white floors and walls, and the whole thing is just more realistic. 
So how do we achieve realistic look? So we achieve that by utilizing physically based rendering. And that is simply a set of techniques to achieve these realistic visuals. It's a set of rendering algorithms that can simulate light in a realistic way, uh, such as ray tracing. And then that is also physically based materials. And this realistic material appearance is defined by how light interacts with a surface. And in context of rendering, we usually talk about diffuse light, which gives the base color for a material. And then we talk about specular light, which gives the reflection color for a material. And material surface and its type, whether it's metal or not, defines how light will interact. So here are two blocks. They are pretty much the same, except the one on the left is non-metal and one on the right is metal. And using these two blocks, I will explain how the diffuse light works and how the specular light works so that you could understand the things that we need for physically based materials and also how to simulate light in a realistic way. Let's talk about diffuse light first. And here is our non-metallic block and there's some white light coming in from top left. And the light will penetrate the material surface. It can bounce around in the material's atoms and at some point the light will come out. And when it will come out, it has captured the material's base color. But when we have metallic material, the diffuse light will behave a little bit differently. So again, we have a white light coming in from top left. It hits the material surface, but it actually can't penetrate the material because the material in this case is metal. And that's why there really aren't any diffuse light coming out from the material. So let's then talk about specular light. And let's talk about our non-metallic block first. So again, we have white light coming in. And because this is specular light, it will just bounce from the surface and basically reflect and keep going. And now the specular light color is just white. It's what it was when it was coming into the material. But it will leave some kind of specular highlight on the surface of the material. So as I mentioned, specular light will create a highlight on material surface. And actually the appearance of that highlight depends on the roughness of the surface. And if the material is rough, it means that incoming light rays will be reflecting to different directions, depending on where they hit as shown in the picture. And as the roughness grows, the spread of the specular highlight grows as well and vice versa. To make my point clear, here's an example what happens with a smooth mirror-like surface. All the incoming rays will reflect to the same direction and this will create very precise and clear reflection or a specular highlight. Let's then talk about metallic materials again. And actually the previous example was a metallic material already. So metals are very reflective by their nature. So usually when you see them, you can see them reflecting their surrounding environment. But that's not all. 
specular light will capture the base color of a metallic material. And that's why, for example, in this case, you could see a gold tinted reflection here. And here are our both example blocks again. So basically the biggest difference between non-metallic materials and metallic materials is that non-metallic materials will reflect their base color in the diffuse light, but metals will not. And then on the other hand, the metals will reflect their base color in the specular light, but the non-metallic will not. Okay, so while I was talking about diffuse light and specular light, I was mentioning things like how metallic the material is and what the roughness of the material surface is and the base color. So these are the things that define a physically based material. You need to define whether a material is metal or not, because it will affect how the diffuse light and specular light will interact. And then you need to define the material's microsurface, also known as roughness. And finally, the base color. And here's a practical example from Minecraft with RTX. Here I have two examples on how we can define their material textures. So on the left, we have a glow block. And it's a little bit metallic from here and there. And then we have emissive map for it. And that's not something that is related to physically based materials, but in Minecraft with RTX, we can also define whether a object emits light or not. So that's what it means. And finally, we have a roughness map. So this globe block is not fully rough or smooth. We can vary how much rough parts it has. And additionally, we have optional height map for this object, which works in a similar way as normal maps would. And then on the right, we have a golden block. So it has a yellowish base color. Then we have normals. And then we have this light gray metallic texture. And that's because it's a golden block. So basically it's very metallic. And it's not emissive at all, so that's why that is black. And it's a tiny bit of rough. Let's then finally move on to talking about ray tracing. If ray tracing is a new term for you, it basically is a, at least in theory, a realistic way to simulate photons. And with ray tracing, we can achieve very realistic reflections, accurate shadows, which can be very hard or soft. And for example, indirect lighting. And those are exactly the things that we can do in Minecraft with RTX. We can get very, very nice realistic reflections as you can see in the golden blocks and we can get real time updated indirect lighting. For example, you can see how the red wall bounces from the white blocks and then we can get ray traced realistic translucent shadows. And I'm not going to go into further details how we can achieve those, but there's another talk which goes into very technical details about how, how we implement ray tracing. So I recommend you to listen to that talk if you're interested. Here's another screenshot from Minecraft with RTX. 
Here you can see very nice reflections on the shiny floor and indirect lighting on the walls. And actually, this slide will conclude my part. I hope that you all now have some basic understanding what do we mean by physically based rendering, what we can achieve with ray tracing, how you can create physically based materials in general and in Minecraft. So let's move on to the demo. Hey everybody, this is Kelsey again here at NVIDIA. I'm going to show you how to use Substance Painter to create your own physically based materials in Minecraft with RTX. So this is the default um, load screen when you first launch into Substance Painter. I didn't touch anything or add any preferences because I wanted to show you what it's like right out of the box. So we're going to go ahead and create our project to get started. So I'm going to go to File, New, and here in the New Project setting window, I'm going to choose the template Unreal Engine 4, Allegorithmic. Um, this is just going to automatically set a variety of application and viewer settings. Um, feel free to try any other template or make your own. This is just, in, in my opinion, it's a good starting point. So we're going to choose that one for now. The file select button, this is where you're going to choose which mesh you would like to display and paint your textures on. Um, for Minecraft with RTX, using a one meter by one meter cube mesh with just six faces, no subdivisions, will give you an exact preview of um, how your textures are gonna look mapped onto the block in game. Uh, we highly recommend using the FBX format. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my cube. From here, you're going to see the document resolution. This is the texture resolution that you're targeting. Um, the setting can be changed uh, non-destructively at any time, so you're not bound to your selection here when you first begin your project. Um, Minecraft with RTX allows for a 1024 uh, resolution. Um, you can go higher than that, but it's highly recommended if you want to do HD textures to stick to 1024 by 1024. We're going to keep DirectX uh, format on by default. Same thing for compute tangent space per fragment as true. If you have import cameras selected with your mesh, I highly recommend uh, deselecting this just so that you can have a, a more pure uh, project setting. For the um, adding your reference textures, so basically what this does is we can add pre-existing tiled textures to our project. Um, this doesn't automatically apply it to your cube. We're going to do that in a bit, but it's very good to have a reference photo to your liking to start from. So in this case, I'm going to choose brick textures. So I have this brick base color texture and I also have the brick normal texture. I'm going to import these two. Once everything has been set up, go ahead and click OK. So with the middle mouse wheel to the left screen, this is your 3D view. I'm going to scroll out so we can see this in all of its beauty. To the right is your 2D view. This is where you're going to see your UVs laid out and where you can do your painting on if you so choose and see how the textures that you're creating are going to be laid out on your mesh. Now, completely optional uh, if you wanted to upload your reference textures. But since we did, I'm going to show you how to do this now. To the left on your shelf, go to Project. This is where your reference textures are going to be placed. If you hadn't have uploaded your reference textures, you can actually do so at any time uh, without harming your project. Um, you can upload as many or as few as you want. Um, they're all going to be here on your shelf within your project setting. 
It's also highly recommended, optional, but highly recommended that within your texture set settings, you add an emissive map or an emissive channel rather. Um, if you don't plan on having any emissivity on your texture within Minecraft, that's totally fine. Um, it's going to come out as zero anyways when you export. It's just good to have it just in case you do decide to have some form of uh, emissivity to your texture. So I'm going to press on the plus button to the right of the channels. And I'm going to click emissive. If I scroll down a bit, you'll notice that the emissive channel is here. If you want to make a non-opaque texture, you can do the same thing that you just did for the emissive map by clicking on the plus button and opacity. Note that you can remove these channels at any time. We're going to go back to layers now. So you're started out with a layer one paint layer. Um, we're going to actually apply our brick texture here first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a fill layer. With this fill layer, you're going to notice a bounding box here. This is where your texture is going to be placed. Um, but note that since this is a fill layer, it's going to fill the entirety of the mesh. Um, and I'll show you that in a bit. In order to apply your brick texture, we're going to come over here to the Properties Fill section. And we're going to scroll down just a little bit to Base Color. This is where you're going to drag and drop your reference texture, your, your base color reference texture, if you have one, and place it here in this channel, in this property. Notice how, like I said before, since we're utilizing a fill layer, this is going to fill the entirety of your mesh. Since we also have a brick normal texture, I'm going to scroll down here and under normal, do the same thing, drag and drop. Notice now we have uh, some height to this. I also want to point out uh, for those who are making high definition textures or anything really that's um, 512 by 512 and above, we recommend keeping the filtering to bilinear HQ. If you're going to create a, a more like a vanilla derivative texture at 16 by 16, we highly recommend changing the filtering to nearest. This is because if we keep it at default, this is going to make your 16 by 16 textures a little bit blurry. Um, so to keep and retain that, that definition and information, we highly suggest nearest. For the sake of this demo, um, since we're going to be making a 1024 by 1024 texture, I'm going to keep it at bilinear. Now that we're set up and ready to go, it's highly recommended that you save your project. It's also highly recommended that you save your project with the name of the texture that you want to replace within Minecraft. So for example, we have a brick block within Minecraft. In the resource pack, in order for Minecraft to take this texture, it needs to be named properly. The correct name for the brick block for Minecraft to pull from the resource pack is brick. So we're going to leave it just like this. And we're going to save. Now that we have our base or our foundation for our texture, this is where we can go crazy and make it as unique as we want it to be. Now that we've created our material, it's time to export out the textures. To do so, go to File. Export Textures. From here you can choose the directory where we want to export the textures to, as well as the file 
along with the texture size. In this case, we're going to choose 1024 by 1024 as that's the recommended HD texture size. Here's where you choose the config preset. This is how we tell Substance Painter to package the textures. We need Substance Painter to package the textures a certain way for Minecraft with RTX to parse the data correctly. I'll go ahead and show you how to create that config preset for future projects as well. Let's start out by making that configuration. Go ahead and click on the configuration tab. Right underneath, click on the plus button. This is going to create a new export preset. You can double click on that and rename it to anything you choose. I'm going to rename this Minecraft MER export. Now that you've successfully created and renamed your preset, let's go ahead and get those output maps created. We're going to need two single channel RGB textures as well as one three channel RGB texture. From here, we're going to have to rename these as Minecraft isn't going to know what to do with an RGB texture named this way. Earlier in this demonstration, we recommended that you name the texture that you want to create as part of your project. So for example, since I'm creating a brick texture, I named my Substance Painter project to be Brick. This then will allow me to click on this dollar sign here, project. What this will do is automatically populate this field with the current project name. I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste this into the other directories. From here, since this is going to be our first single channel RGB texture, we need to make sure that we name this properly for the texture that we want to export. This is going to be our normal texture. So I'm going to put right next to the dollar sign project underscore normal. The second single RGB channel is going to be our base color. We can leave it as is. The third channel is going to be our MER texture or our metallic emissive roughness texture. Next to the dollar sign project, we're going to do an underscore MER. Now that we have our texture set up and to be packaged correctly, we need to make sure that we put the input maps into these channels correctly. Since the first single channel RGB texture is our normal map, we're going to go to the converted maps to the right, go down to normal DirectX, drag and drop into the RGB block, and ensure that we're pulling from the RGB channels. Now that's locked here. We can go ahead and do the same thing for our base color. I'm going to go ahead and bring the base color in, RGB channels. Now we need to package our metallic, our roughness, and our emissive. Let's go ahead and take the metallic, place it into the red channel, and pull from the metallic's gray channel. Take the emissive, put it into the green channel, and pull from the gray channel of the emissive map. And then in the blue channel, we're going to put our roughness and again, pulling from the gray channel. We are now correctly um, pulling from the correct input maps and placing them into the correct channels. I can go ahead and go back into export now. Make sure that we are pulling from the correct config. So you're going to want to click on this drop down, scroll down until you see your config and then you press onto, for example, mine is Minecraft MER export. Once that's selected, to ensure that you have the correct export or at least the configurations, click on the drop down arrow here to the left of your texture set. Now you will see brick underscore normal, for example. The brick is coming from the project name. Brick for our base color, and then brick underscore MER for our metalness, um, emissive, and roughness. Again, all pulling from the project name. Now we can go ahead and export out our textures. Export successfully finished. Let's open up the folder and verify that the textures are there.
brick, brick MER, brick normal. We have now ensured that we have the correct texture in the correct format and I also, when saving these out, ensured that I'm putting them into the resource pack that I wanted to create. This is a good re uh, workflow step to ensure that you're putting them into the correct spots for the Minecraft RT engine to pull the textures from. So now if I were to take and drag and drop my resource pack into the correct directory, Minecraft is going to pull from these three textures. Let's take a look and see what it looks like in Minecraft. And there you have it. We've successfully imported the exported textures from Substance Painter into the resource pack, ensured that the textures were named correctly, and brought them into Minecraft by embedding the resource pack into a new world. As you can see here on the brick texture that we created just now, you can tell with the normal map as it's being brought to light figuratively and literally as the sun is coming up from the horizon over into daytime, into noontime. You can tell with the difference in the MER texture how we don't have a very low roughness or a high metalness versus the oak planks that we've created for our texture pack on the ground here. You can see some reflections from the oak planks as they have a very low roughness. If we come over around here, we can see a, a bigger difference between the roughness map from the brick textures down to the oak plank textures to my right with the specular highlight. Thank you so much for watching. We hope the Substance Painter tutorial helps kickstart your creative flow. We find Substance to be very intuitive when it comes to creating PBR textures. You saw how easy it was to get set up and export the textures with just a simple config preset. We highly recommend you check out our PBR texture guide and Java World Conversion to Bedrock guide to get you started. Thanks again, and we look forward to seeing your creations within Minecraft with RTX. Hi, welcome to Pixel Art PBR in Photoshop for Minecraft RTX. My name is Joel Garvin. I'm the art lead on the Minecraft team at Microsoft. So what I'm going to be going over today is how to take a texture and create the supplemental textures to give physical base rendering materials that are needed for uh, Minecraft RTX. I'm going to be using the example of the redstone lamp today. Uh, and starting from that vanilla texture to create the supplemental textures. Now, what I'm not going to be covering is um, how to necessarily paint your own pixel art texture from scratch for new blocks or how to build a resource pack. So. Um, the resource pack should be covered in the previous presentation, or you can find that other information on, on through NVIDIA's resources or through the Minecraft.net resources. Um, all right, so let's get started. So here we have an example, kind of the end result that we're looking for. We're going to create this glowing redstone lamp. Uh, here's the example at night and in the day what it looks like with ray tracing on and then this is what it currently looks like in game when you have a redstone lamp on. So this is without ray tracing and this is with ray tracing. Um, things that we're going to be creating for this are a metalness map, a roughness map, and an emissive map. And then we'll also go into, uh, we'll combine those three textures into what we call an MER, metalness emissive roughness texture. And then we'll make a second texture that is a height map to get this kind of depth in between 
Let's zoom in and take a look at that. Um, you can see there's a slight highlight here and shadow on the edges that I've um, painted there. So uh, that will give some added depth to the block that you don't see in the original vanilla texture. Um, and this is a type of normal map, so we'll go over kind of the different types of maps that you can create. Uh, some other things I'd just like to quickly introduce here. So I mentioned we're going to be using metalness and roughness. And I've created a little grid here to kind of demo uh, those material attributes. So on this grid, this is typical of PBR um, materials where on the right hand side we have a completely rough texture and no metalness value. And then as we go towards the left on the graph we get um, completely smooth on this row or column. Um, so you can see they're getting very clear reflections. And then as you go up towards the top the metalness is at 100%. And what that's creating is it's contributing the color of the texture, this red, to the reflection and the highlight. So you can see this one has a quite white reflection from this platform that it's resting on. And then this is quite red. Uh, OK, so I'll show the textures that are used for this so that we can pull those values. And we'll create some for. Um, vanilla. And just for a reference, uh, this is what that looks like without ray tracing. So you can see their, their color texture is all exactly the same. The only difference is the metalness and roughness value between those blocks. Alright, so let's take a look here. Here we have the vanilla redstone lamp. So you can see I've got a full screen here and then in the navigator window a little preview. Um, when we zoom in and out, you'll see this red box change, but uh, I just like to keep that up so that I can always see what the end result pixel art might look like. Um, that's kind of a general pixel art tip. And then here we have our layers palette um, that has that texture. So I'm going to unlock this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of groups for the different types of textures that we're going to be making. So first, I'll put this layer into a group. Uh, I use the hotkey Control G for that group. Uh, you can also use the folder here in the Layers palette to add a group. And then I'm going to name this group the name of the texture that I want. So this is going to be Redstone Lamp On dot uh, PNG. Now you could also create this. Um, you could create this as a PNG or a Targa file. Uh, the difference is how it treats transparency. Um, as a Targa, you'll have three different or four different channels: the RGB and Alpha, and it will save that. Um, and you can store color information in in that Alpha, whereas a PNG, it's going to flatten out and you'll lose that color information. It will just be transparent. So I can show an example of that. Um, here, if I got my eraser, and I were to erase this middle section. If I then color pick this section, I'm just getting this green, this bright green, or RTX green that I had by default. So there's no color information stored there. I got a brown because it was stuck as I was sliding around. But same thing. I will not get any new color information from that point. Now, if I were to paint in the alpha channel for this,
I still have that color information, so as I color pick it, I can see the different colors that I have there. But this will save out as transparent with the Targa. Okay, let's undo that. Okay. So first thing, there are two kinds of color that we can create for PBR texture. We can create this one that is um, color with lighting information. We could also create this as unlit. So right now you can see there's a highlight on what is this glowing um, glass area. If I wanted it to be unlit and rely only on the reflection from the PBR material in the game, then I could just paint this all as a flat color. Um, in my experience in pixel art, this doesn't show up quite as well. It will show up really well if you're using high-res um, normal map textures. Um, but we'll create kind of two versions as we go through this. So let's bring that in. So here, let's put this in its own group. We'll make this one on lit. Actually, let's make that color lit. Color, just color. Let's copy this and call it color on light. This is how we break it down in the um, resource pack. So we want to make sure we stick to that so we understand what's going on. Uh, OK, so why am I making these in folders that are .png? So if I save this PSD, Redstone lamp on PSD. I can go here to File, Generate, Image Assets, and then Save. And then as I paint, let's just extend this out here and here. If I go to that folder again, it's created a Redstone Lamps Assets folder for me. Let's go and look at it actually up here. Here. And I have Redstone Lamp Color PNG and Redstone Lamp Color Unlit PNG. And you can see it's automatically added. Um, I can't zoom in like this. Sorry, because I have a stylus, it goes automatically to drawing mode. But it has, it updates the pixels as I go. So let's undo that. And we'll see that I won't really have to save out all of these different PNGs later. OK. So I'm going to create another group. Let's use this. I'm going to do redstone lamp on M, uh, MER dot PNG. And another group. Redstone lamp on normal.png. Now there's a couple of different methods you could use. I combined MER as one folder, but you could break those out as separate textures that are metalness, emissiveness, and roughness. And, and then 
set up your resource pack to call each individually. I like to work with less files to manage and just manage them within Photoshop. So that's why I like to combine them and the format that we've kind of standardized throughout our workflow. Um, you can also create two kinds of normals, as I mentioned, normals and height. So I'm actually going to duplicate this. And I'm going to make this one a height. And we'll go over the differences between them. Just putting them in the order that I would like. All right. So let's take, I'm going to turn this one off for now and work from here. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to go from here. OK, so I have broken this down into some nice color organization uh, for different materials. So this would be kind of this metal frame and maybe some um, metal rivets that are holding the frame on. And then we have this glowing glass center. So on this metalness emissive, roughness area, I can create a new texture and let's just go right here. Okay, and pull up our grid. So we remember this grid of materials that I talked about earlier. Here I have the textures, the MER textures that create that grid. So again, blue in this case, the same bottom right corner, is no um, or total roughness and no metalness. And then the top left is no roughness and total metalness, which is red. OK, so we can see here on the right, I also have this broken down in uh, grayscale. So if you were to break this out as individual grayscale textures, you could have a roughness texture that was on a scale from black to white, or a metalness texture also on a scale from black to white. Um, and then you could combine them into one texture and get this scale from red to blue. Now what is missing from this is emissiveness in that demo. Um, emissiveness would be uh, the green channel in the combined MER texture, <clears throat> which I didn't include here. We could take a look really quick at what that would look like if I were to take this blue channel and paste it into our green channel. So you can see it's created kind of a green effect. And now let's fill the blue, so we would have totally smooth. All of these would be totally smooth. And it's going from green to red. Or if they were totally rough, you'd have blue down here, this kind of cyan, and this magenta to white. Let's undo that. So what I'm going what I'm going to do here, what I've created this for, um, is to be a color value picker for different material types, just to go um, really quickly. So what I know is I want a metal frame on my redstone lamp, which is this upper row. But I kind of want it to be a rough metal. I don't want it to be chrome. So I want to pick a slightly rough surface. Let's go with something like this value. Uh, I'm going to go kind of a, a more reflective value. No, I'm not. I'm going to counter it with the glass. OK. Let's color pick this brown. And that's going to be our metal. And then let's get the 
brighter value and paint those rivets. Okay, and then the glass is going to be very reflective, but not metal. So let's take, I'm going to do this, this black that has no metal, but is very reflective. So again, metalness is going to contribute the color to that reflection. So this area that is the more um, pink color is going to contribute the brown or this green to the reflection, whereas this yellow area is not going to contribute any color. It will just reflect the color that is bouncing off. So. Okay. So now we have emissive, or we don't have any emissive. We have metalness and roughness. And this area appears black, but we want to paint some emissive. So the other way that you can paint this is going directly into your channel layers and painting green. Let's go here. And we want these to glow quite bright. Now this doesn't have to be all exactly the same, so I'll make another example by going over to our layers, go back to RGB. And I'm going to grab our lit color texture. And I'm going to grab this area. I'm going to grab it from the green so it's a little bit brighter. Okay, and you'll note when you're working in pixel art and moving things around, if you are using transform tool, you want to be in nearest neighbor. Okay. So now we'll note the difference here that this solid green is full emissive. Every area of green is going to completely emit the color value of that texture. And in, in this case, it's going to have a range of emitted color. So this center will be glow very bright, and the area next to the metal frame is not going to be as bright. It's going to have the occlusion from that metal frame. So there's another method where you could enter direct color values for the metalness, emissive, and roughness in your resource pack and not use a texture. But the advantage of using a texture is you have per pixel control. All right, so now I'm going to go and add this to every side of that frame and the center. Let's use that same method, going to our lit texture. Here we'll make the color selection really easy. I had the wrong layer selected. Oh, 
Okay. So now we're going to have a very reflective and glowing glass lamp with a slightly more rough metal frame and metal rivets. Okay, now let's go over uh, the height map. So height map is again another grayscale texture. So what this is going to be is we'll take this frame and that's going to be our furthest protruding surface. So we'll fill that with white. And then the furthest recessed area will be filled with black. Now if we save this as a PNG, it actually has information in every channel. And you could load this as a single channel grayscale image, or you could load this as a normal map where all that data is only stored in the red channel, which I'm going to do. So if this one Okay. And when we do that, this is actually a normal map, but Minecraft will recognize this as uh, only the red channel has information, and so it will treat it as a height map and give us a pixel art style parallax image. Okay, and a normal map, let's create a normal map now. So now what's gonna happen with this height is the red is gonna raise out, we'll get a little edge around the glass, and then the glass is gonna be depressed into the object. Okay, and a normal PNG. So a normal map has that didn't work. Okay, I'm trying to color fill this, so let's go here. Alright. It's filled with white. A normal map will have this typical purple view, and how we get that is we have a blue of white and a red and green filled with 50% gray. So I'm getting black at 50% and pasting it into red and green. And we get this great purple texture. And now we have a normal map that is completely flat. Now the difference between a normal map and a height map a height map tells um, which area of the surface is raised higher than another area of the surface. A normal map indicates the curvature of a surface, so as light passes across the surface, it will hit a raised area and the angle at which that's raised. And this is a little bit more difficult in pixel art to communicate. So for high-res textures, this is going to be very effective. But pixel art textures, you're going to get kind of a, a rough, wobbly-looking surface instead of nice, crisp pixel art surface. So let's paint kind of how that's going to look. If we go here and we get this... I'm going to invert this so we have our glass selected and go to our channels. Okay. Our red channel is going to indicate um, light traveling across the surface from uh, left to right and then our green channel is indicate light traveling across the surface from top to bottom. So here we're going to grab a white. Let's see how we're going to want to do this. 
This is going to be the top of the surface. Okay, and you can start to see in that purple texture how that light is being indicated. Okay, and let's do the dark recessed area or the end of our curve. And you can kind of start to see where the shadow on the other side of that glass is. Okay, now on the green channel, we're going to go left to right. Okay, so now we can see how that color shifted to indicate um, lighting hitting every area. Now I think that I've done something incorrectly because I don't think I should be getting this bright white. But that is generally the idea. Let's see if I can figure out what I did wrong. Okay. So I did create this one backwards, I believe. Uh, a nice way to find out and what I did. Is if we turn this off, Photoshop, depending on what version you're in, and there are other options online to do this if you're not in Photoshop that has this or if you're using something else. Um, but there's a filter. 3D filter, generate normal map. So we can grab our height map, a copy of our height map, and generate a normal map with this. And what it's going to do is open up some options here. And if we switch this to a cube, we can see it's generating this normal map behind. Uh, and what I've done, these settings kind of keep the image crisp for pixel art. If you're doing high-res textures, this may not be the settings that you want, so you feel free to experiment, but it has blur and a detail scale. So blur is going to make our normal map very soft. We want I want this to be nice pixel art, so we'll keep it very crisp. And then a detail scale is how much noise or blending it's going to have. So we reduce that quite a bit. Let's go. Let's go to one hundred and see. Okay. That's giving us a little bit different of effect. It may not be what you want when you paint, but it does give you so the red channel is going left to right, and the green channel is going top to bottom. Now it is giving us 
blue channel information. We typically don't really want blue channel information, so I'm just going to fill this with white again to get that nice purple color back. But we'll keep that red and blue. Now that's a really quick way, but it's not as controlled. Um, you don't always get what you want. So let's go back and edit this one so that my normals are facing the correct direction. So I had flipped the channels and flipped the lighting direction. So we can take this one. I'm just going to rotate this. This block happens to be perfectly symmetrical, so I can luckily just rotate these in place. There, that looks better. Okay, so now we have that top left highlight and bottom right shadow on our object, which matches this top left and bottom right. Okay, now you typically don't want both a height and a normal map. Um, this is just an example of the two different methods that you can use, uh, similar to how we did color and color and lit. We don't necessarily want both of those at the same time. Uh, they're just to be examples. Okay, now if I save my work so that I don't lose it, um, now I don't have to save all of these images individually. I can just go to my folder, imagery, and assets folder, and I have them all here. Color, color unlit, height, MER, and normal. And I can use those in a resource pack. All right. That is everything for creating the texture. Now let's look at it in game. OK. Here we have our redstone block, and it's glowing. We have our emissive channel. It has the metalness for the frame, and its roughness for the frame and the glass to be very reflective. Now, currently, when it is emitting light and it's dark at night, um, you're not going to see so much of the reflectivity here. But if we switch it off and go to day, it will be more clear. So here's our emissive going away, and you can see it kind of reflecting the white of that ground on the glass. And you can see the height map effect and reflection of my hand in the glass. Let's go look at it in the day. Okay, so you can see the red zone dust is being reflected in that light. You can see the clouds reflected off the top of the glass as I move around. And the white and grass reflected off the front of that glass. And that highlight edge giving that 3D effect. So again, what layers we're using here. We're using the color, which has the lighting information baked in. We're using the metalness, emissive, and roughness. When it's off, there's no emission. When it's on, there's your emissive. And you'll notice the light area is glowing, and the frame is not glowing. So we get that per pixel emissive information by using a texture rather than direct values. We have the roughness, so we get the reflective glass. And then we have the height map that's giving us this kind of pixel edge.
Now let's load up. Let's load up the normal map to see the difference there and the color unlit. Okay. So here we have the color unlit texture and our normal map. So if you remember, we painted the um, glass area solid in the unlit texture, which we're seeing it, and we're seeing it emit light in that um, same solid color. But then we painted the normal map on these edges. So you can see as I move, the lighting angle on those edges are receiving different information from that normal. Um, now, we're not really getting the full effect because we didn't paint a bunch of detail in the roughness map or the metalness map in the frame or the glass to get variation in the reflection or um, metalness contribution. But, in my opinion, you don't really get the same effect in pixel art using unlit color and normal map as you do with lit color or painting in all of that pixel information or the height map that gives that nice crisp pixel art style look. So to compare that, here is uh, the color and um, height map information on redstone lamp off which looks more like a pixel art style object. This one's a little bit simplified and cartoony. Doesn't have quite the same effect. All right, now here's a sample of some of the other blocks you can create. Now you can create different cobblestone layers on the furnace, you get reflective glass, you can use semi-transparent um, opacity for glass, like stained glass, and make kind of colored gel that the light can come through. You can have the tools on the crafting table pop out. You can define your planks in wood on the um, cartographer block or uh, the bookshelves. You can define some sand or cobblestone again, obsidian, and then of course we have our different material types that you can use from our 4x4 material PBR grid. No roughness, no or fully rough, and no metal to totally smooth and full metal. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching, and let's see what awesome textures you make.